Hey, what's going on everyone? Before you click away from this video because of the low quality, I was testing out some new post-processing filter settings throughout this weekend and only just realized when I was editing how bad some of the adjustments were. That said, most of the clips you'll see in this video are in much higher quality, so definitely stick around. With that out of the way, welcome to the weekend recap number 19 of our official series where we watched some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. And as always, the server and Discord links are in the description. But today, we're going to be extending our conversation from last week's video and talk more in depth uh, about what I basically call active chasing. I genuinely took a long time going through all 20 hours of footage to find specific clips that will help us learn and improve together. So let me know if it was helpful to you in the comments and what other aspects you might want me to cover in the future. So that out of the way, let's get right into it. We're starting off on Friday on CG Bashlands. A little bit newer track in our rotation, but I've been thoroughly enjoying. Uh, really on here, I just kind of wanted to have a little bit of an intro way, uh, just so we can kind of see uh, a little bit of visual I'm talking. But right there, uh, we have myself in P3 making a little bit of a correction and mistake. You saw P4 there having a little bit of a struggle. You can see there on that corner as well. Um, as we talk about this, you know, we want to think about really a lot of different aspects. I really don't want to list them out because there are just truly so many, but we want to ask ourselves, what makes a good chase? Really, we don't want to cause any static or bumping like a lead driver, uh, really, if possible. We don't want to ruin their driftability. We want to make sure we're giving enough space for lead uh, for them to transition. That applies in a train in any position where you're chasing. You really want to anticipate driver transitions. You really want to anticipate the driver lines. Uh, and then really, you want to avoid uh, really any big hard corrections. We want to match the lead lines and then we want to match the lead angle. So all these things are uh, really important. There's going to be a lot more that uh, I would like to say, but for the sake of this video and the focuses, I'm just going to say that for now. I think that's a general uh, good context uh, just for us kind of thinking about those different things. And really, um, maybe I can just generally say, I think we have one more uh, footage from CG Bashlands. Uh, really like another thing I could maybe comment really quickly on is when you're starting out the chase, you know, give a little bit of proximity, learn what your lead driver is doing, how the train is reacting. Try to adjust your driving style to the driver that's in front of you. So are they clutch transitioning? Are they just using acceleration? Are they maybe using a little bit too much left foot brake and slowing down transitions? Uh, and then, you know, especially that last part, a lot of car X people, um, no offense, because I was one of them, really struggle with that not using left foot brake. Uh, so those are just a couple things. Let's talk more specifics now. Uh, really, we're going to get into it here on our next track, which is Drift Track by the Old Tree, technically called... Uh, I think that's actually what it's called. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so this first run, uh, we want to look at basically what my notes are because I added a lot for this video. I really want to try to be in depth. So what my notes say here is there's a lot of good examples of cascading effects. So, hey, man, what do you mean by that? Okay. So in a train position, especially here, like a P2, maybe P3, P4, let's say, you know, there's eight, 10 people in this train. We want to see how my mistakes as a P2 or anyone behind me as a P3 might have that cascading effect. And there you can see P3 having a little bit awkward of a line was kind of able to fix it, but you did see a little bit of static. And here's where we go into one of those core concepts that I explained earlier. As you're really trying to improve your chase technique, and especially again in trains where you're kind of a lead and a chaser at the same time, it is really important to try to match uh, the lines that the lead in front of you is giving you. Uh, really like, yeah, sometimes you might be able to adapt it uh, change it if you're not really in full agreement of what they're doing but as a general rule of thumb uh, most of the time if they're leading especially quite you know for a long time they're probably doing something right so you really just want to work hard trying to match that exact angle online and you can see here i'm a little bit close making a little bit of mistake there generating a little bit of procs and then you see p3 having to scrub back up right into there transitioning we're watching the track camera and there right there maybe the lead was a little bit weird you know really he's genuinely a great driver so maybe i just didn't agree with the line and you saw because of my mistake and not really uh following his line 
very well. I ended up kind of tapping him, if not crashing into him, and then pretty much ruined the entire train, right? That's kind of common you'll see in public lobbies, but that's something that we want to talk about to try to improve that and be a little bit more conscious of it. And so for this clip, actually specifically, I wanted to show, I, I maybe should have said this earlier, but uh, this I'm just showing how you can catch up to a train without being just a straight line, you know, grip racing on a drift track type of deal. You know, you can see, well, at least for a little bit there, that there were people behind me. And really my goal is to catch up Take maybe shallower lines, not really crazy, not going off track, but shallower lines and being patient. And really my goal here in this, I think it is actually P5 position. I'm just trying to wait and I'm really just kind of feeling the train out. I'm coming in a little bit new. I, I don't know the dynamics. Every train is different depending on who's in what position, the lead, things like that. So I'm just trying to sit back. I'm just trying to watch. So I'm trying to see, okay, how are these drivers doing it? You can see, we talked last weekend about pocket proximity and that's really what i'm just trying to generate here you have a little bit of pocket a little bit of proximity that way i'm not being a detriment to the train but i'm still engaged i'm still pretty close i would say probably a little far but I definitely i would recommend highly kind of uh maybe learning or improving that skill set and i think a lot of people will really appreciate it and it'll help you actually be able to uh, drift with that train depending on the dynamics of that specific train and like I said, every time you might see the same people in a train, depending on who's in what position, that you know previous train that had the same people might be a little bit different, right? And here we can see here on P3, making a little bit of mistake, cascading again to P4, P5. Arguably again, you know, a lot of these clips I watched back several, several times. Here again, lead taking a different line. Maybe, maybe me making a little bit of mistake. P3, P4, P5, entire train's done. I mean, if there were more people, there would be more casualties, right? So what I was trying to say is a lot of the time I was actually going through, I was having to replay it and replay it. So, you know, I would maybe challenge you, those that are watching, it wouldn't be a bad idea to really look at those situations that we're highlighting in this video and think like, wait, was that a mistake here? Oh, actually, maybe it was P2 on that. Oh, actually, I see that's what happened. The more you can see it and recognize it, the better you can adapt to it and react to it in real time. That said, we move over to Ogio Akaji Tove by CG. My notes here, and again, I don't normally do this crazy of notes, but uh, I do actually have a lot to try to make sure that this video is valuable. Uh, the note here says it is possible to save a line without causing problems for other uh, drivers in the train. And so I think uh, if I remember right, again, you know, this takes so long to edit, but I'm not complaining, not complaining, um, but it should be more near the very end part so while we're just watching and just kind of think you can see a little bit of late transition from p3 i want you guys to basically just kind of see how the reaction is right there a little bit of an extra angle messing up a little bit more people behind me p4 a little bit far taking a pretty awkward line but trying to sink in so not a problem there's no one behind him and here we're going to look for where that note was uh that i have here that we can save a line with a really quick and hard adjustment. So let's play really close attention to, I guess, the three wheel motion aspect of this. Oh, and uh, really quick, what I was going to say about this track is, uh, you know, a lot of the lines are a lot different than I would normally take. So uh, Scooby has actually been really helpful. So let's watch this part right here. Make a big mistake. Boom on the E brake, back on the throttle. And look at that. Because of P3 giving a little bit of proximity, and then also me, I would argue, being really quick of the reflexes, even though that is an extremely fast and aggressive adjustment, we were able to save the train and can, uh, continue to keep it going. So I thought it would be a really good uh, to highlight here. Now, my notes for this run are that the S13, the white S13 behind me, is doing a great job of adjusting my line. So I think right here was a good example. Looking a little bit too shallow. Uh, the S13 behind me in P3 taking more of a natural line that you would expect. And I think throughout this entire run, um, there was a lot of issues as I'm still learning this track too, where I think that actually the S13 was taking a little bit more of an intelligent line. And this is where I talk about kind of being like a shock absorber or really like a stabilizer for a train, right? So we can see the S13, I think doing a great job. Maybe here having a little bit of rough uh, area and on also like there's a lot of variables that go into this like everything is very dynamic so it could be me being a little bit too much on the throttle me being a little bit too much on the angle 
me not following the exact lead lines all these things play into your chase or more specifically i should say into the p3 position and behind and how they're going to react every action you make in a train is basically amplified and i did want to call that part out right there you saw the s13 maybe have a little bit of contact boom immediate with the reset we want to try to keep the train going if you keep the train going you can always jump back in and roll back in into the train right so i thought that was really cool i thought he was super quick on it i mean arguably maybe even better than i am honestly uh now we talk about this note talks about a pinch point and different lines that it looks like our p3 is going to be making so we're going to give a lot of looking at our p3 which is this uh purple r32 behind us so we want to see is he matching angle is he transitioning on time uh is he taking the same lines and you can see right there yeah big pinch going really shallow on the inside and, and again like when you're not matching angle when you're not following or trying really hard to follow the same lines as the person that you're chasing you're gonna really find out like there's a lot of problems that you're just gonna feel like hey man i just can't trains are so harder for me i just don't understand what's going on arguably yeah your lead is really important but i really think that that's the biggest reason why people have issues they're not really making the uh, adaptability or really adapting or making adjustments i guess i should say in a general sense to what's happening in front of them or arguably behind them right you kind of want to think about how your lines the things you do not even just your mistakes are going to affect other drivers in the train right this is why i say trains are really really difficult but i think that trains can really uh level you up i guess lack for a better term uh into being a better driver because you're doing both the chase and the lead at the same time so that's it for akaji togue now we switch to a new track i don't think you guys have seen before and this is new for me too actually my first time this is cg final bout two so what was really interesting i have two leads and two chases on this at least i hopefully should and basically i just wanted to talk about these lines on this track so i think there's a lot of good areas of opportunity uh opportunity for me excuse me uh to actually improve a lot of the lines i wasn't quite following 100 percent but the more i drove this track the more i started to understand and really i think there's a lot of cool clips in here that are going to highlight a couple of those problems that i generally had uh, on this track and the the issues that uh, it can cause for others right so basically with this track uh you have these different zones so this outside zone you really want to hit i think actually majority of these zones you want to aim for so that inside completely missing it putting me on a very wide line and makes it a little bit awkward here inside uh inside zone to outside missing the outside zone i promise this is like only a couple runs in so don't judge me too hard uh outside zone here you want to come out a little bit early i think for this section here now i think i was taking this a little bit too shallow uh but we'll get but get to that later then here on the outside zone you want to aim for it you really want to throw your car out and kind of let it grip you back through inside zone here uh i, I don't think this has necessarily a zone here but you're gonna see we're gonna roll up to this outside zone right there and then you're gonna have a little bit of transition to this inside zone a big tip from scooby was to do an upshift so i was doing a shift from third to fourth here not really featured in this lead uh, or rather just run but just thought that might be helpful for those of you that might be struggling with it so really here what my notes are saying to me is we want to highlight the thoughts uh about the train chase not matching angle struggling uh, a couple issues in the lines mistakes made in p2 but the line is able to adapt i think here we're coming up to a spot right here i don't take the same line as he does i go a little bit wide you can see p3 taking the same line p4 taking my line potentially can cause a little bit of static there uh for the rest of the train right and again like every uh there's a better word that i can't really think of right now but basically everything you do multiplies right so your one mistake times two to the next times two to the next and eventually someone's gonna have to eat it if that's not a reset if that's not a crash um you really want to try your best and, and this is why trains are really hard uh to be better and there you can see right there on the long straight a lot of people not following the same lines really we want to go inside to this outside zone and then cruise it out but i think a lot of people are struggling with uh what i mentioned that third to fourth or maybe they're just trying to stay in one gear it is really difficult uh as you probably saw before if you're not shifting up so really like your gear decisions right can definitely influence your line decisions and ultimately how you're driving is right there me making a big mistake going out and throwing a, a lot more angle going wide thankfully p4 was able to adapt to it a little bit but there you can see that one mistake it took a little bit 
I would argue ruined the entire train that I made. Even though on my screen, it didn't look that serious. You can even see me looking back like, oh, what happened? That is 100% on me. And I thought it was really important for you guys to see, like, I make mistakes too. I'm not even saying I'm that great, but I'm saying that I make mistakes and that those little mistakes that to you don't seem like a big deal can really impact the train in an extreme uh, way, basically. So here, my notes also say, there's another insane mistake made by me here in the P3 position. Uh, and then it looks like that P4 adapted and uh, basically following P1's and P2's line instead of mine. So here, I think this is where that comment was for. P4 having a little bit of proximity gap to work with was really more, it looked like focusing on P1, P2 and was able to absorb that mistake that I was, uh, was making actually in that area. But it did still cause uh, a couple issues and uh, ultimately, I think this run in a general sense was me kind of running up on a tandem, uh, not being too aggressive on the proximity. I wasn't really out with them when they first went out. So I'm just trying to give them a little bit more area to work with, uh, not trying to crowd them up too much or anything like that. So now we move over to clutch kickers. So again, this is another example, joining a tandem and really like they're out there throwing it. I want to be involved, but I don't want to be the reason that I'm messing them up. And I want them, you know, if this is a public lobby, I want them to want to drive with me, right? So I'm just giving space. I'm just having all this pocket. I'm just making sure I'm engaged in the chase and I'm trying to transition and follow their lines as best as I can. And I think here, if I remember correctly in my editing, you're going to see a little bit of a bunch here right there. So P2 making a slight mistake and there you can see again, really like a little bit of a mistake makes a big deal but because i had that proximity built in that pocket proximity built in and also i'd argue that p4 had a little bit of pro uh, proximity there as well we were able to absorb it in that corner without too many uh too much of an issue right so this uh this run on my notes again i hate to refer to it but i'm literally reading them and uh, i i tweet too many notes i went ham dude uh but i'm just saying here near the end of this clip um, it looks like there's going to be a couple issues with transition timing. And I'm saying this preemptively to kind of help you guys look to see what I was seeing. And then uh, that way it's not a, oh, oh my gosh, you missed that. So this way you can be a little bit prepared. So we're looking for transition timing. And I think we're going to see this about around here. So I think I take a little bit of an adaption of a line, a little bit slow on the transition. It looks like it's okay. We have a little bit of proximity built in. Same thing here. Unless I was wrong, man. Unless my notes are wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. That's my mistake. Yeah, this is why I, I got to work on my notes. Uh, basically, I was just trying to show another catch up to a train uh, and a slow roll into the sink. Man, that is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. If you're watching this, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I'll, I'll be getting better about these notes for sure. But this one specifically, I have it right there you could see me going on a little bit wrong of a line and not only that but a little bit off on the transition timing making a little bit of static for the train but thankfully on p4 p5 able to adapt and uh really we've talked about that before already right we've said hey we want to be adaptable we want to be dynamic we don't want to just take the same lines that we're just used to taking and this is a great example of drivers behind me adapting the mistakes that i'm making and still keeping the train alive we want to make sure everyone's having a good experience in the train we're keeping it cohesive that's really our goal like yeah we could be door to door we could push angle but sometimes you're going to have a better train with just a little bit of proximity and i personally would rather have more of a maintained proximity uh instead of oh dude i'm on his door i'm killing his door like it's crazy because it also doesn't give you time or really any ability to uh to adapt right that's kind of the idea here oh i need a really quick drink of water sorry guys sorry guys private so yeah, I'm throwing a lot of things at you, uh, but I did, and there you go, again, messing up on the transition timing. Didn't have the pocket, uh, pocket proximity that I needed to. Uh, again, the people behind me, P3, P4, and actually beyond were able to adapt and uh, overcome that issue. So I now, we're on Brooklyn Park. I really just did a quick like breather because I, I knew this was gonna, I didn't think it was gonna be this crazy at least. Uh, for me, I feel like I'm going off the rails but I did want to just give a little bit of a breather here to just kind of recap what we talked about. And I also really want you guys now, we've gone through Friday, we're about to come up to Saturday. I want you to really think about a lot of the things and a lot of the uh, 
things that I've said and rather that you've also seen. And I want you to see if you can spot uh, a lot more of these issues. So I did a little bit less obvious issues. I still have some that I will be commentating on, but I really want you guys to kind of now with a lot of these things that I'm specifically pointing out, I want you to watch these trains and, uh, and really like my runs itself. So my first person view, but as you guys know, I like to watch the track camera. It really gives us a nice overview of what is or isn't happening. So I really challenge you guys, watch this track camera and see if you can really spot, okay, I see what he's saying. There, he made a mistake or there P4 made a mistake. Oh, that's why the train is totally dead. Oh, they're taking like a weird line. They're not following the lead line or maybe the lead is having a really weird line and you're like, oh, I see if I go all the way outside there and I don't maintain that momentum forward, I can see where that bunching is coming in. This is what I've explained to you guys in previous videos. And I think it's just important to restate watching your replays is really valuable. I have the luxury here to be able to edit and rewatch it. Um, I honestly, I have the replays myself too, and I upload them uh, every weekend for you guys to look at and rewatch if you want to. So you don't even have to record it yourself, but genuinely it's a great opportunity to not only watch yourself, but maybe pick a couple drivers that you're like, ah, man, those guys are killing it and pull up the pedal, pull up the uh, wheel, basically the app. So you can see what they're doing and maybe what they're not doing and learn a little bit more. If you guys genuinely want to improve, I think that's a really powerful tool. Uh, you know, if you don't really care too much, I think you could still gain just a lot uh, watching these kind of videos and hopefully it's helpful. So that being said, we are now about to switch to uh, CG Segoya Park. And so this note here, and again, sorry to keep saying this note, but I'm literally reading over. So I'm not seeing exactly what's happening on screen. Uh, the note says the issue before the long straight watch your line and the chase behind you uh which then causes an incident so let's watch this together now i'm not going to commentate on every mistake here i'm going to start focusing a little bit more on what i was thinking while you guys are hopefully watching the track cam so here i'm trying to maintain that uh basically the same proximity throughout this whole time a little bit slow on the transition but i'm really trying to match it there you can see people behind me taking a little bit of a different line a little bit of a different line, a little bit of a different line. And there you see some contact, right? And that is a great example of why following the lead line. So that's not just in general, like, right? That's not just if you're in a chase, but if you're in a train, you're leading and chasing, following the person in front of you, that leader and really matching their lines and angle. And there you can see too, again, the uh, purple R32 making a little bit of a misstep not throwing enough angle not matching the lead in front of him and then boom hitting him uh luckily it looks like he was able to save it there in p4 but another great example of uh of how that can work out or not right and and really the proximity you don't want to be too far too close and if you are you know too close or really too far that's going to impact your transition timing so again it is really important i think again to have a constant amount of proximity and maybe sometimes a little bit more or less i also want to highlight this part too i've heard a lot of comments about okay well you know it's not realistic to just reset you know i don't want to reset you can see right there they were not set up very well for that line and i think both of them kind of knew it or even p2 was just following p1's line and said oh this is not going to end well boom just pulling off track it is possible to still do uh you know to bail in a safe way maybe we get into that in the future but i think uh really my biggest thing that i really genuinely do care about is uh talking about not ruining the ability for other people to drive or, or rather drift and that's what i think resetting is really important versus trying to be uh, realistic unless hey everyone in the lobby you're friends with and you know and you're all on the same page and know that that's going to be how you drive right and there you can see p3 taking a really crazy line i think it was maybe just a mistake but you saw p4 and p5 also taking the same line which set him up really far on the outside ended up making a mistake you know no no uh no shade towards uh p3 or the r32 at all but it's just another example there we saw again your lines the things that you do in a train situation genuinely do matter uh i feel like i'm beating that to death but it genuinely does matter <laughs> so um now we're on rhythm and flow we are going to be focusing mainly here on the pocket proximity uh an example in my notes here saying that 
there's a example of bad lines when pushing too hard to catch up so look at we're going to be looking at p4 here they're trying to push really hard to catch in this train they're trying to force the issue you can see a late transition you can see them now take this shallower line but look at this boom sets them up on the outside and really just throws them completely off look at this they're just really struggling to get re-engaged that synchronization you know for those of you that are watching that are saying man i just struggle with trains this could be the key right there really focusing in on having that constant uh proximity and then also focusing on the person in front of these lines and focusing on the transitioning time uh might really help you uh genuinely might help you so here this is a lead i like to show more chases just because it's more uh you know more things happening but basically we want to watch p2 so p2 is technically the leader of everyone else and i'm just leading p2 but when p2 they're right there taking a little bit late of a transition look at this completely sh uh throwing off p3 a little bit and still even a little bit late on the transition and you can kind of see like the responsibility in a p2 p3 p4 position sometimes is arguably more important than a lead you know the lead kind of sets the lines but ultimate and maybe the pace i guess uh but at the same time like your p2 and your p3 those people near the top can also adapt that line if the lead is just not 100 percent where it needs to be really the only thing that uh p1 is going to dictate at that point is going to be the uh momentum and the speed right so now we're going to be looking at another lead uh, we're going to look at p4 on the second to last to uh corner near the straight so it's going to be coming up here so what is p4 going to be doing what did p4 mess up here so you see going a little bit shallow on the angle and then causing a little bit of static i think he tapped p3 a little bit a little bit of proximity generated and you can see this is kind of where i say like the turbulence in a train happens right like you can see like everyone kind of just like i don't want to say clawing but i don't know else how to describe it just clawing to try to get back into that synchronization trying to catch up you know they're seeing i'm sure p1 go super far p2 go super far away and they're trying to uh climb back up to it but really like there's only so much you can do and this is why i say a slow roll back is really important so now we switch over to, and this is specifically Ebisu Complex, so it's the uh, full free roam. I wanted to give another breather here. And actually at this time, uh, I think we were just, I think we just grabbed on the track. Uh, we were just kind of warming up, uh, at least for me, just kind of filling it out. I actually even was able to set uh, fast reset points. I won't get into too much, but if you have comfy maps, uh, if you're ever on our server for Ebisu Complex, you should have the ability to quick travel uh, to all the different tracks on here. So yeah, we're just basically watching myself in a P2 position. We have Scooby in the lead. And really, like, he takes this line a lot different than I've seen uh, most people take, actually. And then not in a bad way. I actually really enjoy the line that he takes here. But every time, it is a little bit different. Um, I'm really just trying to make sure I'm not ruining his lead. So again, we talk about, like, oh, dude, being on the door, like, you're so far away. This is true for sure, uh, but it isn't an FD event. Uh, it isn't a competition. And I want to make sure that the people behind me have a stable uh, ability or some stability to be able to drift. And I'm really more concerned about the train hell. So for sure, like there are some times where, you know, I'm going to add a little bit of extra proximity, make sure that our lead has the room for his transitions and his lines. But ultimately, we're going to come out and we're going to have a stack of, you know, 10 people. And I think that's the sick part, right? And I'm not saying be, you know, 100 feet back, but I am saying, like, just give a little bit of space, right? So now we switch over. Still episode complex. This is Manami specifically. I wanted to show off a couple leads here. Uh, so I really, first off, going from single screen to VR to this track was absolutely insane. I still struggle immensely on this track. I'm still feel like I'm constantly learning. Uh, really, I was trying a couple new things here. So here, uh, I, yeah, there it is. I was like, hopefully I do it. Uh, I was trying a gear shift, a little bit shorter gears, going to third to fourth, seeing how that feel, uh, felt rather. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it does seem like most people are staying in one gear and then shifting up into fourth for the long straight. And here, I just want to talk a little bit about the straight. Uh, I'm not a professional and I don't really know how to take this track, but I'm just going to tell you. Basically, you want to grip up, straighten up here. You kind of want to be an angle. I'm not really an angle there, but boom. Uh, a little bit of e-brake action to get me slid through and then there you are i mean that's like the biggest thing i think what i've seen that looks probably maybe arguably cooler is a very fast run up to that straight section onto the hill and then a little bit of a like an initiation or a faint and then boom you're on the wall 
I'm not that good of a driver, dude. Like, honestly. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the idea. And I think the train, or sorry, the lines that I'm taking are generally the uh, the right lines. Maybe not perfect, of course, but uh, again, generally the right lines. And then also I wanted to say, uh, these are just going to be just like some chases here. We have uh, our good friend Turbo on the lead. I'm giving him super proximity. I am 0% comfortable with any of my lines. I don't even know uh, if I'm going to be able to, to hit these properly. And you know, some of these uh, I didn't, right? So like they're not in the video, but it, it does happen. But I want to also say something that I think would be helpful for you guys too. I think it's really important, especially like a track like this that you're rather me, right? So I'm not really familiar with this track. I know I'm not very good at this track. I've only driven it a handful of times. What I did actually for a lot of this track, man, I was just on there getting my lines right, trying to just work. It was helpful to, you know, follow people like Turbo and others, stay kind of far behind, not interrupt them, even if I were to make a mistake and, uh, you know, just kind of learn the lines, see what they're doing different. But mainly I just want to say, like, I think it's really important, especially if you're on a server with other people, I think a really cool idea is you're not really comfortable with the track. Don't jump into a train right away. Kind of learn the lines get comfortable with the lines kind of figure out what you think is going to be the best lines and also while you do that there might be people that are like oh hey man this guy's kind of killing it and all of a sudden you have a stack of people behind you right and that's a really good sign so then once you're like okay cool i'm like tired of leading i feel pretty confident boom i think it's a great time to switch over to more of a chase or uh even like a train at that point so i just kind of wanted to add that in just some thoughts while i had while i was editing so now that you guys have been basically given a lot of the thoughts a lot of the ideas behind uh the different lines you know we talked i i, I would recap every of i guess i should we talked about following the right lines talked about having the same lines uh having the same angle as best as you can trying to get a little bit of uh pocket proximity as i've been calling it to other drivers in front of you not making quick adjustments uh, so that way people can adjust to what you're doing. I mean, that comment, if you just think about it, if someone's on the road and they slam on the brakes and there's no one in front of them, you're not going to really react as fast as if you were to see people in front of them, them start kind of applying the brakes and then slam on the brakes, right? That's kind of the idea in a general sense. Hopefully I'm explaining that correctly. But beyond that, we also want to make sure that when we talk about having the right lines, having the same amount of angle. We also don't want to be too far in front of uh, other people's cars. So here we're kind of like aiming generally. I've been looking a little bit more towards the front wheel. When I was early on trying to get accustomed to a set of Corsa, I was actually having a little bit too much of an aggressive forward position. So I started, uh, I think it's actually because of that. And then I was aiming a little bit more for the mirror. So there's a couple spots that you can kind of look at uh, I think everyone's different. Depends on a lot of different factors, but also something to consider. But hopefully you guys have seen, and I uh, explicitly put in a couple clips in here of uh, issues. I, I actually kind of don't want to call it out, man. I would love to hear what you guys see. Um, you know, this is just off the top. I think it'd be really cool maybe from um, this section and forward if you guys maybe left in the comments some timestamps of what you think uh was an issue and i'd love to see what your guys thoughts are uh and also maybe if i agree maybe you guys uh will enlighten me a little bit so if you guys are interested i'm not gonna pressure it but uh it sounds actually like a really cool idea if you guys are down for it but anyways i don't know if i said this but this is cg drift valley my apologies um and i would say in a general sense because i want to kind of see what you guys say uh, really here, my thoughts is just add a lot of proximity. I'm not too sure how the train is. I'm not feeling super confident about what's going on. So I'm just staying back a little bit. We now move over to Takamaki. And I kind of want to do a little bit of the same exercise for this track too, to kind of see what you guys, uh, what you guys think. And apparently, uh, I think this is Fmods in front of us talking about a local food spot that he said was amazing and would not tell us what the name was so uh take that for what it is but yeah so here really i'm and while you guys are thinking about the train and maybe what issues are going on just to kind of add the commentary here i'm looking a little bit at this p1 p2 it's kind of disconnected here but i'm kind of seeing what they're doing i'm looking at p3 seeing how they're reacting 
I'm trying to add enough proximity for the transition for the driver <laughs> or the chaser in no, front of me. You. Actually, and I'm trying not to be a little like, bit too aggressive. There you can see a little bit too on the door, but I felt like I could just because it's a long extension. Oh, you know what it is? You're just not and then, up to my door. That's <laughs> yeah, absolutely talking mad. Uh, madness, I will say, for uh, YouTube censorship reasons. But again, same thing. Kind of look at this. You can see a couple people crashing. What caused the crash there? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe you know. Let us know. But yeah, same thing here. Basically, I'm just really focusing, especially with these vets, man. These C5 seem insane on the uh, power or grip. I'm not sure. But I'm just staying really far back. Okay, not really far back, but I'm trying to stay a little bit more far back than I would like. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not losing them on the transitions or really in general. They're really fast cars, I feel like. Or maybe this is the drivers behind them. But yeah, I'm just trying to stay close. Not not too crazy. Not trying to force any issues here. And then here is our third uh, run of Takamaki. Man, I feel like I totally spaced saying uh, the name earlier. So again, watch the track cam. See if you can see what things, you know, even if you're not going to comment it, which is totally respectful, uh, respectable, res respectful, who knows? Uh, but just kind of look at like, okay, and don't even just not look at me. I mean, there maybe are some things that I could have improved. Maybe a couple lines that are making mistakes. Right there, you saw a little bit of a uh, an accordion or a little bit of a slinky action, a little yo-yo action question is what caused that right yeah man i mean i, I know I, I hope i hope i have a couple people comment i'm really curious what you guys are going to say but now for our final track we are now on u.s airway and this track i mean talk about adaptability there's so many different ways to take this line right here um i typically e-brake a little bit you can see a little bit of e-brake on scooby side transition here you want that forward momentum as best as you can and then this line, we were kind of going back and forth a little bit about like, what's the best way you can see a little bit behind me on P3, P4, having a little bit of slowed down. Is that because there wasn't enough uh, proximity? Is that because the line that the lead was uh, taking is not conducive for a train? Again, I would love to hear what you guys think. These are kind of things that, you know, we like to discuss and, and uh, really think about, you know, sincerely and try to be better drivers for each other, but also, you know, for train, the ability to have a train. But yeah, man, I mean, holy, I feel like I ran through this video. I'm like barely keeping up on all the things that I want to say. But I left a little bit of extra space here. I don't think I left enough, though, looking at the time. Uh, basically, the big things here is we want to be adaptable in a train. We want to adapt to the lead in front of us. We want to not just grab doors for the sake of grabbing doors, for it feeling like we're grabbing doors. We want to really make sure that we're matching the angle of the driver in front of us that we're matching the transition timing is another big thing uh, for the driver in front of us. Not making massive aggressive corrections, which I'm talking about left foot brake, e foot, uh, sorry, e brake uh, adjustments. Those things in a general sense, I mean, I would say are like the biggest things. And then leaving enough space for the transition in front of you. So that way, when they go to transition, you're not messing up their transition, which more often than not, I think is going to mess up everyone behind you. So that's basically it, man. I mean, I, I want to try to do a little bit more of these style of videos. Um, I think there's just so much to say. I'm maybe even thinking about doing like less of a weekend recap and more like each week focus on like very micro specific uh, things to help other people. But Genuinely, if you guys made it this far, man, thanks for watching. Uh, would love to hear some feedback. Want to make sure I'm making videos that are valuable uh, to you guys and helps everyone out there improve because we're all here to uh, hopefully get better and improve as well. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to uh, see you on track this weekend. Uh, until next time, man. Peace.